Well, you got your Bibles ready. Just keep them handy. Let's jump quickly into this series. We are going to be talking about holiness. Who loves holiness? Amen. Somebody said, I love it, but I don't know what it means. Well, that's going to be a little bit of an effort for us to explain it today. Can I, can I go ahead and just say something? It's not a part of this lesson, but can I just say something to clarify? All right, y'all ready? I've said this before here, and some people just looked at me because they've been around here long enough. They were like, holy smokes, pastor's compromised. We do not believe in holiness standards here. There's only one standard of holiness. God. Amen. We believe that God calls us to reflect Him. And with holiness comes expectations God wants for us to example, to emulate, to model. So we're going to talk about it. What is holiness? Now, I've made it real easy for y'all. And uh, <clears throat> let's just jump into this. In modern Christendom, holiness is seldom discussed. You know, you can go to churches all over this planet. You're going to hear a lot about the favor of God, the blessings of God, the goodness of God. You might even hear every now and then, it's not okay to live in sin. But you're not going to hear a whole lot about the holiness of God. It's not really a conversation that's talked about. If you hear holiness, it'll be people that are peripheral to Christendom that live in the world, and they'll tell you, ah, holiness. Holiness. You're one of them churches. As though the, ver the, the, the word holiness is derogatory. Can I, can, I just, can I just make this clear? The angels in heaven cry, Holy, holy, holy. Now, I don't have time to get into the theology of threes, but the declaration of threes, it is a... It is an affirmation of the emphatic nature of something. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says love, love, love. Joy, joy, joy. It says God is love. But, but only one time are we presented with the fundamental nature of God. Holy, holy, holy. What, what is that telling us? The angels in heaven understand that the most essential nature of God. If you want to know who God is, just learn holiness. So somebody goes, I want to know who God is. Anybody want to get closer to God? You can't get closer to God if you don't know what holiness is. So we're going to talk about it. Many times people that talk about holiness, it is tilted towards God alone. So they'll talk about, oh, God's holy. Okay, does it have anything to do with me? What does holiness have to do with us? Look at your neighbor and say, what does holiness have to do with you? That's a good question, isn't it? Is it just God? Is it just God is holy and so we talk about how holy God is and holy, holy, holy? No, no, no. What does it have to do with me? Well, let's, let's look at a couple verses, and we're going to set the foundation. I'm going to go as quick as I can because I've got about 30 minutes, a little less than 30 minutes left. So bear with me. It's being recorded. It'll be uploaded. You can go back. You need to go back and listen to this again. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men. So me, you see these little colors? Read them out to me. Without which... No man shall see the Lord. Doesn't say you might see Him. Doesn't say there could be a possibility of seeing Him. It says if you don't have holiness and follow peace with all men, you will not see God. That's what it says, isn't it? I always said, I'm sorry. I know I use the Bible too much. I apologize. If, it, if you want wiggle room, there ain't much here. Why? Because it's not my opinion that we preach. It's the word of the Lord. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, that you put off concerning 
the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind in that you put on the new man which after God is what? Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. True holiness. Which means there's a fake holiness. Yeah. He says put on the new man. What does the new man look like? It's created after the image of God. God makes the new man. And it's created in righteousness and true holiness. Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy. Except, well, what does holiness have to do with me? Obviously quite a bit. Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That word service is worship. Don't tell me you're a worshiper if you don't worship with holiness. This ain't worship. That's an external, that is an external symbol of worship. I do, but, but worship is living holy. You want to know what attracts God? Himself. God's attracted to Himself. Now, well, that's egotistical. No, 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 no. No, no, no. God has an ego, but He's not egotistical. And there's a big difference philosophically. God is attracted to Him. What, what is Him? He's holy. What attracts God is holiness. That's why people can come into this church and they can, the first moment they walk in, they can feel something in this place. Right, Verna? First time she comes, she goes, I've been to a bunch of different churches, but my God, I walked into your church and I felt something there. I'll tell you what you felt. You felt the people dedicated to holiness. It's not old school. It's the most modern, relative, cutting edge thing you can have in your life. Why? Because God is the most relevant, cutting edge. God don't ever change. That's relevant, baby. Present your bodies, living sacrifices. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost. You feel that? I love Sunday school. Don't you, you love Sunday school? I love Sunday school. Look at your neighbor and say, I love Antioch Northwest and I love Holy Ghost Church. Woo! 1 Corinthians 3, 16, 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of Hollywood God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. You get that through the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. It's what happened to everybody that got it in the New Testament. Amen. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. He said, you're the temple of God. And if the temple's holy, honey, you better be holy. Now, it sounds a little bit caustic, but we still believe. I believe that there's a better way to teach it, but I do believe at the heart of me, holiness or hell. Now, I might have, this modern generation might have perfected the language to sound a little bit sweeter, but hell's still bad. And it says, if you ain't got holiness in your life, you ain't going to see God. So, Let's look at holiness. In the Old Testament, only one nation. If you can't read it, I can, so just bear with me. In the Old Testament, only one nation. Everybody say one nation. Among all the nations of the world, receive the express commandment that ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Not the Egyptians, not the Babylonians, not the Canaanites or any other major civilization of the ancient Near East. One nation was called out by God to be holy. One nation. I'm going somewhere. One nation. So let me say one nation. One nation was saddled with the responsibility of consecration. The call to holiness penetrated the Israelites' daily lives in a way that captured time, space, 
and their existence in both. Here it is. The Sabbath, calendrical days, and the tabernacle. This is how holy, this is the expectation God had for one nation. He said, you want to be my people? Then you're going to let me intersect and penetrate every single area of your life. (laughs) Nothing's going to be outside of my influence. And so he said, here's the deal. I'm going to command you to cease work on the Sabbath and I'm going to shut down human productivity, creativity, and ingenuity. I know the other nations don't do it, but you're different. You're going to keep the Sabbath because the Sabbath is a day that you carve out for me. The other nations don't have to have this responsibility, but you are called to have your productivity. Well, I need to work today. Oh, no, you don't. You serve a holy God and you're a holy temple. You carve it out. You sacrifice. I'm going to tell you what we have today is we got people that say, I want to live for God, but I don't want to carve out time for God. Time was held daily to divine procedures at the house of God. Listen, their world revolved around God's house. How they camped, where they lived, what they did revolved around the house of God. They didn't get to say, well, it's a barbecue today at 11. If something was going on in God's house. God said, because there's only one nation that's called to represent me and bear the sacred responsibility of consecration, there ain't no excuses. If you're going to be holy and you're going to be a people I dwell among, your schedule's my schedule. Wow. Somebody says, well, I ain't fair. Well, then don't be holy. Israel could have said, we don't want that. God would have found another. But I'll tell you, I want to be, I want my daily life interrupted by Almighty God. Not only was it daily interrupted, it's time to gather. It's time to sacrifice. It's time, well, I don't feel, you don't matter what you feel. If you're a holy nation and a holy people, you serve a holy God. Annually, there were feasts that were fixed calendrically. There were events called Holy Feast, and God said, you listen to me, I even own your calendar. If you're going to be a holy nation representing a holy God, then you're going to give me your calendar. Oh, well, I got a vacation. Oh, no, 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 not during the feast days. I'm going to tell you, I am very tempted sometimes to bring a little bit of the principles of the Holy Feast days into the church community where we have seven revivals. <laughs> and nothing gets in the way of those seven revivals. Why not? Woo! I tell you, this will preach, so I'm preaching it. Even their movements, somebody shout movements, were confined to the divine directives of the glory of the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, which corresponded to where God's house was. God said, you don't move until I move. You don't camp until I stop. So their time, their movements, their Sabbath, daily, annually, every part of their life. I'm going to put it this way. Here we go. Their resources. I didn't even get into their first fruits, their harvest. I, I didn't get any of that. Their resources, their harvest, how they dressed, how they ate, whom they married. Are you with me right now? Only one nation had this responsibility. Only one nation. Every single feature of their lives was held captive to an expectation of holiness. Only one nation. But why? Why only one nation? Because holiness always seeks and demands sacred time and sacred space. See, well, listen, don't forget this. While God is everywhere present at the same time, He doesn't manifest 
everywhere at the same time. God right now is in the alley where they're hitting drugs. But he doesn't manifest among rebellion. So what God looks for is a place to manifest his glory. Somebody say he looks for a place to manifest. For a nation to be holy, it necessitated that the holy dwelt among them. I want to be holy. All right, then you got to have a holy God dwell among you. And if you want a holy God to dwell among you, you got to have sacred time and sacred space. So how, how, how do you get a God? who is perfect and holy to dwell among an imperfect people full of problems. you got to have a sacred space. And it's got to be penetrated by sacred time. Because God doesn't just operate in the mundane, common, banal, carnal places of our worlds. God doesn't go, I'll wait for you to finish. God goes, if you want a holy God among you, then you're going to carve something out. And you're going to take your calendar and your day timer and throw it at me. And say, God, you choose whatever you want, when you want, how you want. So how? The fundamental dilemma is how do you get a holy God among an unholy people? And then people become holy. Even Moses understood this when God said, I'm not going with you. And Moses said, if you don't go with us, we're no different than any other nation in the world. The only thing that makes us different is your presence is with us. So the only way to be different, the only way to be holy is to have a holy God. But how do we get a holy God among us? The tabernacle in the Old Testament answered that dilemma. How can a holy God dwell among people? He said, I'll tell you how. You give resources. You sacrifice your time, your talent, your treasure. And in the middle of the desert, you start carving something out that has nothing to do with your agenda. Where none of your flesh works. It's a place of emptying. Oh, God! You carve out this space for me, and you give me your time. God says, if I can have a place and time, then my glory can fall. So holiness then and holiness now. Then there was one nation. Why one nation? Because God needs a sacred space who can dedicate sacred time. Only one nation. In the Old Testament. So what about now? The church. Becomes the new distinctive means. By which the holiness of God is now manifested throughout the world. You ready? Don't forget this. As there was only one holy nation of Israel. There is only one holy bride of Christ. The new holy body of Christ. There was one tabernacle, and there's one church. There was one Israel, and there's one church. And God took the principles of holiness for them and said it still works the same way. I still need one means. I still need one vehicle that will carve out a place for me in this broken world. Same thing as the Old Testament. You don't get a glory dwelling among the people if they won't carve a space out for Him. And so how does it happen here? When you receive the Holy Ghost, we become new creatures. And when we become new creatures, the ribbon-cutting ceremony happens on the new temple. God found a place to live. The Bible says, you can't make it into the kingdom of God except you're born again of the water and the Spirit. In other words, you've got to have a holy God 
penetrate an unholy place and renovate it completely from the top to the bottom and make it brand new. Everything I used to do, I don't always do anymore. God changed the way I talk, changed the way I dress, changed the way I live. I want to be a Christian, though, that doesn't carve out a place for God. Then you're not a holy nation. Because the Bible said that you are called out of darkness into His marvelous light. You're a holy nation. A royal priesthood. You're chosen. So just as God chose one nation in the Old Testament to represent Him to the rest of the world, God chooses one nation today. It's called the kingdom of God, the body of Christ. You get the Holy Ghost. You're born again. You're baptized with that wonderful presence of Almighty God. And in that moment, what a great moment. Anybody remember when you first got the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues? It was a newness like nothing you ever felt. My God, I don't feel guilt, shame, dirtiness, none of it. I feel so liberate. Oh, I feel clean. You want to know why you feel that way? Because at that very moment, you are exactly what God needed to fill. And on the front door of your temple says, no vacancies. I'm filled up from the top up, from the floor up, and I used to be toe up. This Holy Ghost is the best thing in the world. Isn't it wonderful, Rahel? But it ain't wonderful if you don't like holiness. I want you to think about it because if you got the Holy Ghost, don't say, oh, I, I'm filled with the Spirit. The evidence of being filled with the Spirit is you got a holy temple. You know, you know, I talk like a good Christian. God bless you. That doesn't make you holy. But the temple's clean. The temple's pure. What we watch, what we wear, what we do, where we go, how we act. Honey, I'm not competing with the Kardashians. I'm not competing. I'm not, I don't want Hollywood pumping itself into my world. You want to know? Not because I got a church that gives me rules. These aren't rules. These are oper operatives to get closer to God. This isn't an obstacle. It's an opportunity. Thank you. Some people, oh, holiness is a burden. Throw that language out. Not having to watch garbage ain't a burden. It's a privilege. You know why? Because he's close to me. I can sit in my car with pure thoughts, no shame, no guilt. And he can move on me whenever he wants to. If you've been fighting holiness and holiness is in the, we're going to get in all this. You've been fighting it, honey, don't fight it. Oh, if I, listen, I'm going to tell you, when you live holy, you don't have to warm up to feel His presence. It's always people that wrestle with holiness that have to warm up. I'm going to tell you, you've got to get to a place, say, God, I want to get to a place where I walk in, just walk into church, and it's, it's there. I don't have to warm up. I, I, it's just, man, the power of God. Why? Because God's inside of me. So you get the Holy Ghost, you become the temple of the Holy Ghost and called upon to present your bodies as living sacrifices. Holy! God didn't give you the Holy Ghost to walk around and claim that you're just a Christian. Christian's a noun. Disciple's a verb. Why? Because discipleship is holiness. It's I'm following you however, wherever you go, whatever you do. I'm going to look like you, talk like you, dress like you. Whatever you want from me. Too many people think Christianity is a place of stagnation. I accept them and never move forward. I'm reaching for holy. You know I woke up today and I said, God, perfect holiness in me. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you right now. I want this church... I, we don't know what to call our group, our Theology Thursday group. I don't, we don't even know what to call us. I said advance, one said hyphen. Y'all are amazing. Y'all are amazing. And some of you getting closer to getting to be a part of it. Oh, it's going to be good. 
But I want you to understand, you all, at your, from, from 18 to 30 years of age, you walk in boldness. Start businesses. Walk in holiness. You ain't got nothing to apologize for. This is what I look like. It's what I believe. It's who I, it's, uh, this is holy. Well, that ain't, hey, don't tell me what's necessary. God wants a space. And I kind of feel this is what the Bible says space ought to look like. Amen. I'm going to fix something. The tabernacle became a temple. Sometimes we get stuck on the badger skin and the ugliness of the outside. He said, you're not a tabernacle of the Holy Ghost. You're a temple of the Holy Ghost. We adorn, we beautify it with holiness. The Bible said, worship Him in the beauty. You know that word beauty in the Hebrew is adornment? Now, you didn't know that, did you? Adorn yourself with holiness. Well, how do I know that? Well, He was the first, listen, somebody goes, what was the first profession in the Bible? God was the first one that made clothes. God even cares about what we wear. You don't think that matters? He looked at Moses and goes, here's the deal. I got some specific instructions on how the priesthood makes it into my glory. They got to dress a certain way. Can you imagine Aaron go, I don't want to wear this. He said, well, you ain't going to get in the presence of God. Why? Because God gets to choose everything. You know why? Because our bodies don't belong to us. The Bible says, know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are not your own. The quicker we get the revelation, God owns all of me and not some of me, the quicker we'll get out of debt. Here I am. Tell me what you want, God. I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost right now, I feel it. I wouldn't have to preach it. I wouldn't even have to talk about it sometimes. You started praying that prayer, God, whatever you want, show me. My favorite story, Sister Rahel, to this day, she showed up, had been baptized in the titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. She goes, it ain't right. I, she heard the teaching. She went home because there's no name pronounced in the titles. If I give you a check right now and I write Father on it, you ain't going to cash that check. Because there's no authority in a title. I feel the Holy Ghost. Sister Rahel, she started saying, well, pastor, two weeks, I started doubting. I don't think I need to do that. Then I had a dream. Can I share that dream? She said, pastor, I started dreaming. And somebody knocked on the door of my house and opened up the door. And there was a UPS man at the front door. And he had a big box in his hand. He gave it to me. What is this? Because I can't deliver it. She goes, why? I paid for delivery. He said, there's no name on it. She woke up and she said, Pastor, baptize me in Jesus' name. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Oh, this thing works! Woo, I feel table turning anointing this morning. It's like, well, this is Sunday school. Welcome to our Sunday school. I told Brother Elder, this is what built this church. I love this Holy Ghost. Does anybody feel a stern in their spirit right now? Holiness isn't something to be afraid of, ashamed of. I'm holy because he's holy. Well, I don't do this because I'm convicted. You ought to be convicted if you ain't doing what God tells you to do. Why? Because i got to carve out a space for Him. So the call to holiness is a life long. It ain't once and always. My God, you get the Holy Ghost in your brand new baby every morning. You get up. You're searching your temple. There better be nothing here that messes with my resident. <laughs> you open up the little doors 
you do sniff tests. You walk around and you pray for discernment. And if you find something inside your temple that's not supposed to be there, you say, listen to me. This temple's for one thing only. It ain't for porn. It ain't for Hollywood. It ain't It ain't for doubt, perversion, addiction, rebellion, obstinance. And if you catch something trying to shack up inside your house, blow the whistle. Get into your prayer meeting. I'll tell you what a prayer meeting's been for me many times. It's been an eviction process. I said, I ain't leaving this prayer meeting until somebody gets evicted. And I let that holy God of Israel and the holy God of this church knock on the front door of my temple, slam the thesis of you don't belong there onto the walls of my heart, and I watch sin just run away. And when it runs out, say, and don't come back. Somebody needs to say that right now. If you're struggling with an addiction, don't let condemnation beat you up today. You just make up your mind before this service is over. There's going to be an eviction. Somebody say, and don't come back. Somebody goes, how do I conquer pornography? And don't come back. That's how you beat it. Conquer it by saying, don't come back. And how do you make sure you don't come back? Walk around that temple every single day. Pray. Live right. Worship. I'll tell you what, you don't, you don't turn on that thing that shows you a bunch of scantily clad people and call it entertainment. You suffer depression, don't you go watch a depressive thing. Listen to depressive music, which means you can't listen to country. What's the old adage? You play country backwards, you know what you get? Your dog back, your car back, your wife back. Half the country today is just the twang of depression. She left me, and I drank another beer. You got to say, get out. Depression knocks on your door. Not today. This is a holy place. See, somebody says, well, depression has to, oh, don't get me started. I'm, I got clinical experience. Got to be medicated. Got to be, you know, prognosticated. You got to have all this stuff. I'm going to tell you right now, nothing, nothing, nothing in the world beats an encounter with a holy God. That's why he says, be renewed in your mind by the power. She knows what I'm talking about. It works. We about, I'm telling you. We got to start. Let's start calling. We got church buildings to call. We got, well, okay. We got, we got warehouses to call. I feel the Holy Ghost. I hope somebody else feels what I feel. Woo! I feel it. (laughs) All right, be seated. You're making me come on. I got to quit. I've got three minutes. Why? So the call to holiness is a lifelong pursuit of self-denial, emptying. Come off that cross. No, I'm going to empty myself. It's the kenosha. It's where God on that cross in the man, in the flesh, said, I'm not getting off this cross. I'm here to empty myself. 
because I've got to create a place. Woo! So when you get up right now, you know what? If you don't have the Holy Ghost, God wants to carve out a place today in you. I tell somebody all the time, you'll talk in tongues when you get the Holy Ghost. If you've got dentures, take them out beforehand. Don't worry about it. You think I'm kidding? I've known more people that didn't get the Holy Ghost because they was worried about their teeth flying. Then just take them out and let God fill you. You heard it at Antioch. It's real though. I've told somebody before, just take them out. The Holy Ghost, they're a little... Take them out. I'm telling you, hey... Don't let anything get in the way of God filling you. I know we got denturous people here. I'm not looking at none of y'all. I love our denturous people. Every time at 2.30, two th- I think of you. <laughs> That's what time you go to the dentist at 2.30. All right, I'm, I'm finishing. There was one nation of Israel. There's one church. God told that one nation in the Old Testament, you're going to be holy. I take over your calendar, your time, your dress, your walk, your talk, your everything. You go, I'm telling you right now. God forbid the Jews that have rejected Christ do better with the external practices of holiness than the church that's got the holy God inside of them. When you get the Holy Ghost, Brother Joe, something changes inside of you. You remember it. Some of y'all got the Holy Ghost, went home, tried to put that old garbage in the CD player. And that new resident inside of you said, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh, I don't do that. Because your eyes are my eyes. And your heart's my heart. (laughs) We're meant to be one. That's the seven dimensions. That's one of the dimensions. Oneness. Amen. We're meant to be one. You remember that, some of you? I remember when God filled me with the Holy Ghost, I tried to go listen to some old music and... You ready? I listened to that crazy stuff. (laughs) Understood every word of it. I got the Holy Ghost, went back to it, couldn't understand a single word that they were singing. You want to know why? Because a different spirit was listening through them ears. You want to know why I could try to go put something to that I watched before and go, whoa, I don't remember that being in there. Because different eyes were looking through, saying, please, carve out a place for me to stay. Amen. Let's have church.